Today's lesson is over writing quadratic equations when you're either given three points or a table of values. You may recall that when we're writing linear equations, we only need two points. We only need two points to find the slope and the y-intercept. However, when we're writing quadratic equations, a quadratic equation in standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I'm looking for three different variables, a, b, and c. If I have three different variables, I need three different equations. Okay, so three different equations, I'm going to need three points in order to write a quadratic equation. So in this first example, I've given you three points. What we're going to do, these ordered pairs are x comma y, we're going to take these ordered pairs and we're going to plug them into the values for x and y in our standard form right here. What we're going to do is set up a system of three equations and solve for the variables a, b, and c. What I'm going to do first if, is if I ever see one of these points have a zero as an x value and a zero as a y value, I'm going to set up that equation first. So let's use this first point and we're going to plug in the 4 for y and the 0 for x. So 4 equals a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. And then we're just going to simplify this as much as we possibly can. I know 0 times anything is 0, so those cancel out, those cancel out. And this is a really nice problem because I've already got the value of c. c equals 4. Let's move on to our next equate, or our next uh, ordered pair, which is negative 2, 6. I'm going to plug in, and I'm actually going to put a 2 right here and a 2 right here. This is my second part, so you can follow along. I'm going to plug in 6 for y equals, and I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x. So a times negative 2 squared plus b times negative 2 plus c. And then we're going to simplify this as much as we possibly can. So 6 equals, what is negative 2 squared? It's 4. So 4a plus negative 2 times b, that's just minus 2b. And then we don't need to write a c here because we know the value of c. c is 4, so I'm going to write plus 4. We can simplify this further by subtracting 4 from both sides, and we get 2 equals 4a minus 2b. We've now created one equation with two variables. Let's do that for another equation, and then we'll solve a system of two equations with two variables. So in this third ordered pair, I have an x value of 1 and a y value of 9. Let's do this right down here. I'm going to plug in 9 for y, so 9 equals a times 1 squared, 1 for x, plus b times 1 plus c. And I'm going to simplify this further to get 9 equals, 1 squared is just 1, so I'm going to write a. 1 times b is just b, and then I know the value of c to be 4. I can simplify this further by subtracting 4 from both sides, and I get 5 equals a plus b. What I have effectively done, which is what we're doing when we solve a system of three equations, right? We eliminate a variable, and then we solve um, a system of two equations with two variables using the method of your choice. So as you can see here, I have now one equation with two variables and another equation with two variables. And I'm going to write those down over here. Equation A is 2 equals 4A minus 2B. And equation B is 5 equals A plus B. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use whatever method I choose. And I'm going to solve for the variables A and B. The method that I want to use that I really like to use is the method of elimination. So I can eliminate any variable that I want, and in this case, I'm going to eliminate the variable b, which means I need to multiply this entire equation by positive 2. What, right? I'm wanting to create the same but opposite coefficient so I can eliminate that variable. 
If I multiply this entire equation by 2, watch, I'm going to rewrite b down here, I'm going to get 10 equals 2a plus 2b. And I'm going to rewrite equation a right here, 2 equals 4a minus 2b. And we're going to solve using elimination. So I've now created two equations with the same but opposite coefficients for b. These get eliminated when I add these two equations together and I get 12 equals 6a. When I solve for a, I divide both sides by six and I get a equals two. I now have the values for c and for a. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in this value of a right here into any equation that I see. And actually I'm gonna change colors again because I'm just trying to keep it different into any equation that I see. I see this equation right here to be a really easy equation to plug in two for a. Five equals a plus b, five equals two plus b. When I solve for b, I subtract two from both sides and I get b equals three. I now have the values for a, b, and c, so I can write this equation in standard form. y equals ax squared, y equals 2x squared plus bx plus 3x plus c. There's my equation in standard form for the quadratic that contains these three points, 0, 4, negative 2, 6, and 1, 9. And all we did was set up a system of three equations, three variables. It worked out really nicely where we had um, the y-intercept here, 0, 4. It worked out really nicely for this one. Um, we didn't have to eliminate, you know, it just eliminated that first step, those first steps of having to eliminate one variable so that you've got two equations, in two equations, so that you've got two equations with two variables. So that worked out really nicely. Let's move on to the next example. In the next example, we're writing an equation given a table. And all we're gonna do is pick three points that you would think would be pr pretty easy to use when solving the system, or when solving um, a system of equations. So when you're given a table, you only need three points. So pick three points that you would like to use. This first one, I see zero, negative three. That's my y-intercept. I know that that's gonna eliminate that C variable or the A and B variables and determine or let me know what the value of C is. So I'm gonna use that one first. So in the first equation that I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna use the ordered pair zero, negative three. I'm gonna plug in negative three. And again, we're writing the equation in standard form. We're looking for the variables A, B, and C. So I'm gonna plug in negative three for Y equals a times, I'm gonna plug in zero for x, so zero squared plus b times zero plus c. And we're gonna solve, or simplify this as much as we can, which we know that's gonna get eliminated, that term's gonna get eliminated, and negative three is the value of c. That works out really nicely. It doesn't always work out this way, but in these examples, it makes them go much more quickly and like I already I already uh, put the card up in the right corner of the screen for you to click that old video of solving a system of three equations. It's a very long process, um, but it will help you in these first few steps where we're not necessarily automatically given the value of a single variable. So let's set up another equation. What's the next um, ordered pair that would probably be easy to use? I'm going to choose this one right here, negative 1, 2. So in the second equation, and you could choose any one you want, I'm just choosing one that um, looks pretty easy. So negative 1, 2. I'm going to plug in negative 1 for x and 2 for y. So 2 equals a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. And then we're just going to simplify this as much as we can. Negative one squared is just one, so that's a. Negative one times b is negative b. And then c I know to be negative three, so I'm gonna plug in negative three for c. I 
can simplify this further by adding 3 to both sides, and I get 5 equals a minus b. Now I've got one equation with two variables. Let's move on to a third ordered pair. My third ordered pair that I'm going to choose is 1, negative 2. So let's set up that third equation here with 1, negative 2, 1, negative 2 as my ordered pair. And I'm actually going to erase this so it doesn't look like negative 1. 1, negative 2, I'm going to plug in negative 2 for y equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And we're going to simplify this. Negative 2 equals 1 squared is 1, 1 times a is a, 1 times b is just b, plus c. I know c to be negative 3, so I'm going to plug in negative 3 for c. I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get 1 equals a plus b. I've now got another equation with two variables. So I've got this equation right here, which we'll call this equation A, and we've got this equation right here, and we'll call this equation B. We've got two equations and two variables. Let's set up a system and let's solve it. Equation A is five equals A minus B. Equation B is one equals A plus B. So when we add these two equations together, the B variables get eliminated, and I've got six equals, and don't forget that's one A plus one A, which is two A. When I solve for A, I get A equals three. I now have the values for the variables A and C. So I can use those values and plug them into any equation to solve for the variable b. In this equation right here, it already contains just the variable a and b, so I'm actually going to use this very simple equation to solve for the variable b. If 1 equals a plus b and a equals 3, then 1 equals 3 plus b. If I solve for the variable b, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and get negative 2 for b. I now have the values of the variables a, b, and c so I can write my equation in standard form. y equals ax squared, a is 3, so that's 3x squared. b is negative 2, so minus 2x. c is negative 3. That's minus 3, and there's my equation in standard form. And let's move on. I want you to grab your TI-83 or 84 calculator, and I'm going to show you how to perform a quadratic regression on your calculator from a table of values. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to enter our data into our list. So whenever you're performing any kind of regression, a linear regression, a quadratic regression, or we'll get to an exponential regression, any kind of regression, you're going to be in your statistics. And stat is this button right here. So let's go into stat, and we're going to edit our list. So press enter. You're going to enter in the values that are, on your that are shown in your table on your worksheet. So if you want to go ahead and pause the video, enter in these values now. Whenever you're entering, entering values into your list, you want to make sure that you have the same number of X values as you do Y values. And you can see that I do here. L1 represents my X values. L2 or list 2 represents my Y values. And I have the same number in each one. If you don't, then you'll get some kind of error whenever you're performing your quadratic regression. So now we can quit this. We don't necessarily have to, but we can go back to our home screen. So second quit, second mode. And we're going to tell our calculator to perform a quadratic regression. So go back into stat. And now we're going to scroll over to calc. If you scroll down, you can see linreg, which we've worked with before. Scroll down to number five, which is quadreg. That's a quadratic regression. Press enter. You're telling your calculator, 
we're going to use L1 for our X values, L2 for our Y values. We're not storing our regression equation right yet, but you can store it um, into Y1 if you want using VARS. If you go to VARS right here, you can enter in a Y1 right there. It'll store your regression in there, but we're not going to do that in this video quite yet. Go down to calculate and press enter. And here you have your values for your variables A, B, and C. So if you were to write your quadratic regression or your regression equation, it would be Y equals 4X squared minus 12X plus 15. And that's how you perform a quadratic regression on your calculator.